Talk about the Troutman Street shooting in, during the Banana Civil War, or what somebody called the Banana Split. I love that. It happened that uh, Frank Labruzzo, who he was with Bill Banano's side, of the, the two fractions are shooting at each other, the other fractions, the Georgia fraction, uh, that Frank Labruzzo had been contacted by this guy, Serenio Tartamella, who was John Tartamella's son, the Tamaltas were acting as go between between the Giorgio fraction and the Bananos, and they said, "Look, the Giorgios want to have a meeting, want to discuss this craziness. Everybody's shooting. Let's sit down. We'll talk about it." I said, and to show they're serious, they told the Giorgios suggested Bill Banano pick the time and the place. So Banano liked that. He he didn't want the war going on. He agreed to the terms, and he suggested they meet at his grand uncle's home, Vito Bonaventure. Uh, which was at 283 Troutman Street over in Bushwick on Friday, January 28th. The Bananos lived close by at 1555 Tyler Avenue in East Meadow on Long Island. It's about 15, 20 minutes away. So Banano, Lubrozo, Carlo Buddy Samara uh, walked into the house where they met up with uh, others. We don't know who the others are. Joe Nataro's name has been mentioned. The reason we don't know who the others are is... Bill Bonanno didn't tell us. He's the only guy that left the diary of this thing. So I don't know, and you don't know. Please don't write me and tell you no, unless you're Bill Bonanno, then okay. If you do know, you got to give me some documentation. You know, I'm getting these emails from people who are just experts in these things. And Anyway, so around midnight, Vito Bonaventures gets his phone call. Vito Bonaventures is the guy that owns the house. And he gets a phone call. It's from someone in the Giorgio fraction. They said, look, Gaspar de Giorgio, he just fell ill. It's horrible. We can't really make it to the meeting. Let's postpone it. So Bonanno, Simaro, Liberosa, probably Joe Nataro, <clears throat> excuse me, left the house. They start to walk back to the car. Gunfire erupts from the other side of the street. The Bonanos return fire. So all shy sides are shooting at each other in what the New York Daily News comment was with marksmanship that would have shamed a reasonably experienced den of Cub Scouts. Nobody got shot in this thing. A uh, few cars were killed. That's that's about it. So in the next few minutes, uh, a lot of shots were fired. I've read that there were hundreds of shots, as many as 250. Yeah, I, I don't think it seems reasonable, uh, if not damn near impossible, in the short time that he left in this thing. I mean, 250 bullets, a lot of bullets. So... Police estimated that seven revolvers were used and a uh, one 12 gauge shotgun was also fired during this thing. So that's, you know, a little bit different. Um, I just had to correct some spelling here. Sorry. So Bonanno and Samaro, they made a run for it, made it down to nearby Knickerbar Knickerbocker Avenue. And Loberosa, I my guess is he leaped back into the house. The shooters on the other side, they dropped their guns, they ran for it. Police interviewed over 100 people. Nobody saw nothing, nobody knew nothing. <laughs> it's amazing. But there was one woman, this woman, Josephine Ciparoni, uh, Ciparoni, I'm sorry, who told the police that a gunman kicked in her front door and ran like hell through her apartment and exited out the back door. Uh, the poor woman. She was in bed when that happened. So uh, later, Bill Bonanno said that he saw the guns that the police picked up at the scene. He had been called in for by a grand jury, and they had the guns on display. And he recognized one of them as being as belonging to Rusty Rastelli. Rastelli. Uh, a day later, after the shooting, the DA wanted everybody round up. People were pretty angry over this. I mean, the street I should point out is a narrow street. I mean, people could have been killed. One could have gone through a window and murdered somebody. So he wanted everybody round up. So the officers go to DiGiorgio's house in West Babylon, Long Island, and knock on the door, and his relatives answer, he's not there, could never, he's, we don't know where the hell he is. So, however, the cops waited outside around the corner where they couldn't be seen. This doctor pulls up with an ambulance, Guy and walks into the bank, he goes up to the teller, he goes, ah, this is a is fuck up. The teller goes, I, I think he needs a stick up. He goes, no, it's check. a fuck up, I forgot my gun. So the cop says, that's great. Baby, go, go ahead. Yeah. The car. Give me a key, no charge, please. Yeah, what do you want? Put on my back. Put on I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What is with you with the foot? They. Oh, there's a gangster sleeping upstairs. Easy. 
quiet, Sam. Subtlety, baby. All right, sweet cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. They... No, 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 no. That, the guy in the back can't hear you. Go ahead, a little more, baby. Loosen up. Hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> you may be my leader, but I'm going to punch you right in your mouth. I gotta catch a train sooner, yeah. <laughs> what are you complaining about? I gotta go to a bar mitzvah in a minute. <laughs> they heard the breeze through the trees singing weird, weird melodies, and they named that the star. jail came a well from a down hearted frail and they called that the start of the blue from a whippoorwill high on a hill how about that Taylor, it's a blue note. Get off the stage. And then they nursed it. And, and they rehearsed it. it. How does it feel to sit in the back and of the bus? Then I came up the news that the Southland really gave birth. Let's give Dean a chance. Huh? It's up. Yeah. 